Welcome back. The Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore has launched the first virtual model of Singapore's port. The Maritime Digital Twin includes anchorages, piers and ferry terminals and operates in real time. Using the platform from MPA's facility, users can view a 3D map of the seabed to better plan undersea activities like removing the buildup of marine growth on vessels. Real-time vessel information like identification details, destination and schedules will be available to service providers. This will help them better plan their routes, improving efficiency and saving time. For electric ves uh, vessels, the digital twin can detect when they need to be charged and identify available charging stations. And above water, the system tracks maritime aerial drones live. That will give a clearer picture of what's happening on the ground during drone deliveries of spare parts and workers' salaries and incidents like oil spills. Other capabilities also include real-time weather conditions based on MET data, so weather-related delays are reduced. Now, this information from the land air and sea can be seen all at the same time and be used to improve the port's efficiency, safety and reliability. MPA will roll out, will roll out the digital twin to pilot users later this year before progressive implementation for the wider industry. In future, we can extend this to the global maritime ecosystem through our green and digital shipping corridors with other countries and ports. And here to share more about the Maritime Digital Twin is David Fu, Assistant Chief Executive of MPA. Mr Fu, welcome to the programme. Thanks for having me here. So we have seen what the Maritime Digital Twin is. Uh, share with us how it works exactly. Well, a digital twin is actually a virtual representation of a physical object or a system. So in the Metram Digital Twin, actually is a virtual representation of our port. Mm. What it means is that they will allow us to actually use this digital twin to experiment with different kinds of scenarios. So you don't have to build actual physical objects before even trying out uh, in the digital twin. So it helps you sort of look at the various options mm. and the various types of operations before even to begin to build the physical objects. So earlier, we talked about how it works under sea and yeah. also above water, but give us a scenario where it will be, it will come in useful. Well, actually for our port, uh, we have um, an ambition. And by the 2040s, actually, uh, Tuas Port will have a container handling capacity of about 65 million 20-foot uh, equivalent units. Mm -hmm. This means that actually, uh, sea space becomes then uh, premium. And of course, we've got other sea space users too, for example, for climate adaptation. What this means is that with greater container throughput, it means that we need to host more and more ships. And therefore, Digital Twin will help us to look at how more efficiently we can turn around these ships quickly in order then to increase the capacity of our port. What about uh, in situations where there are oil and chemical spills? How will this system come in handy? Well, it gives us a very clear view of exactly how the incident looks like in real time, mm -hmm. which means then we can actually uh, rally our resources and precisely actually use them to tackle uh, these incidents in real time. Okay. So I think it helped us really make effective decisions uh, on the go. And who will benefit from this exactly? Well, uh, as a new authority, of course, uh, we manage the incidents out at sea. Mm -hmm. um, and also we do gather all our contractors who are also part of the incident response. And with that, actually, everyone has that visibility and precisely knows what their jobs are in tackling that particular incident. So MPA is looking at extending the digital twin to the global maritime ecosystem yes. uh, through the green and digital shipping corridors with other countries and ports. But do you see the maritime digital twin as a game changer? Oh, well, besides the, I would say, the green and digital shipping corridors, actually, we built the digital twin with our small and medium enterprises in mind because it's not... Um, Perhaps it's too costly for every individual company mm. to build its own digital twin. So we, are, we have an open platform and we built it uh, precisely so that we can share data with the various companies in Singapore. And hopefully they can utilize it, uh, look at how they can best optimize their operations and then help uh, Maritime Singapore prosper. Yeah. How is it transforming the sector though? Well, it allows us to actually 
share data openly. And because of its capabilities to visualize the data in two dimensions or even three dimensions, it gives a very different perspective and allows us to do uh, long-term planning. So, for example, earlier you mentioned about the electric uh, vessels. Sure, yeah. And every electric vessel actually has range anxiety. So with the digital mm -hmm. twin, actually they can look at their daily orders and they can actually best plan their routes to maximize their battery capacities. That helps really to streamline the operation. And I suppose AI was quite integral in the development of this system. Uh, what were the challenges in developing this digital twin and are there any limitations to it for now that you're trying yeah. to overcome? There were some challenges, and I would say the biggest challenge is to make sure that the data is accurate because the AI can only work well mm. if you have good and accurate uh, data. The other challenge I would say is that at the beginning, uh, it was not too easy to find the correct talent to come join our team. But uh, later on, I think we overcome that, even though it's a small team, but they did their best. And uh, I'm glad that they have come so far and we look forward to actually improving it uh, into the future. When it comes to data accuracy, how are you uh, addressing that? Well, it's important to look at what are the single sources of truth and to be able to precisely uh, identify these and then say that, OK, these are the trusted data and the others we just treat as noise. Okay. Or you can do some data cleaning mm. and that also helps to make sure that the data is usable. Yeah. I, I understand that uh, the model will be trialled in the second half of 2025. It will also be rolled out to the wider industry progressively. How will the digital twin help Singapore status as a maritime hub? Well, actually, we're not just waiting for the second half. In fact, we have already started um, talking uh, mm -hmm. to several companies mm -hmm. who are very keen to work with us. So I think that's uh, is a very good step because as more companies come in and take advantage of the digital twin and the availability of data, all can become, uh, be able to take advantage of its capabilities to then help their operations become more effective. What else are you excited about in Singapore's maritime sector, Mr. Fu, as we you know, move forward? As you uh, <laughs> probably seen uh, today, actually yeah. I'm really excited about the wide job and business opportunities that the maritime sector does give. So I would encourage uh, those who are young, uh, who are just starting out their careers, and even mid-careers, to really consider maritime uh, as their port of call. <laughs> what would your advice be to them, you know, for them who have not you know, taken that first step? Well, I, I would say that uh, just try it, right? Uh, don't have uh, preconceived ideas about uh, maritime. Um, it's not always the difficult, dull and dangerous kind of work. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we're going a lot in terms of uh, looking at AI, technology, and these are jobs which uh, I think will be very exciting uh, for our future. Yeah. All right, Mr. Fu, appreciate your insights. Thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. Glad to be here. That was uh, David Fu, Assistant Chief Executive of MPA.